this after work. There's gross. Look how gross. Oh, a little bit of cracking at the top. Uh, I, think, I don't think the other one did that. So we'll see how gross turned out. And Dude, that looks cool as crap, actually. <laughs> uh, actually, it doesn't look gross. It looks pretty darn cool. Not too bad. So we've done quite a few Project Soapway challenges. And as a result, I have looked at the footage and listened to the footage and looked through all of the documentation that a lot of Sudzers have sent through. And one thing that is just the exact same with every Sudzer that I see over and over again or hear over and over again in their footage is how grateful they are for the Sudzer community and how much they love being a part of it and all of the kindness and the support and the encouragement and the love and the lack of fighting that they see within this community. And I agree. And it's why I started Project Soapway in the first place, because I realized pretty early on that the Sudzers, the people that were drawn to the Soap and Clay channel that wanted to, you know, come be here and hang out, they're really cool people. And this particular person is no exception to that rule. She is actually the rule. And I'm very, very excited to show you her soap and tell you more about her in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week 34 of year three and Project Soapway Puree Challenge winner number three. And that winner is Diamond Sky Soapery. Now she's won the challenge before, and back then she did not have her business started yet. And we knew her as always. And also is Kimberly on here. And I get to know her as my friend. She is definitely one of the Sudzers that I've connected with on a very real level and I'm very glad that she exists in my life. And I'm not going to get sappy and I'm also not going to get too far into, oh my gosh, she's so amazing right here because I'm going to do a whole lot of that through her video. Now her video is going to be a video of the picture that I probably put in the thumbnail that I actually selected because I thought it was an avocado puree, like a camocado. And then I found out with reviewing her footage that it was not an avocado at all. She used uh, baby food as a puree, which is cool. And so let's get to her video. We can talk more about Diamond Sky and all of her awesome creations and her new business, which everybody needs to go support, you know, in the video. So first off, when I first started watching this footage the first time, I just said first a whole lot, I was shocked how many oils there were here like wow that is a lot of oil that that's a moment and uh then she said in the footage that it's my swirls recipe and i'm like oh yeah that's a lot of oils and it's my fault so there's that but yeah swirls recipes are a little bit different because you kind of lean into a lot of different properties to make sure you get a really slow moving batch and she's i think going to really need a slow moving batch so it was a smart decision for her because she is effectively splitting her batter into four different parts and her lye solution so her oils and her lye solution splitting into four different parts 
and doing four different colors with ombres and all kinds of stuff going on like an infused rhubarb olive oil which is amazing and she's also doing uh, there's a spirulina or maybe that's a spinach i'm not sure yeah spirulina and i also love that she has her batch date on it so she knows how long it's been infusing also we're working with indigo that's amazing and then she's got baby food she is using baby food and i love that so that's a squash butternut squash again i thought this was an avocado when we selected it it's not it's a squash and then pear and blueberries so that's a lot of fun for sure i don't know what she scented this with but i think she tell oh yes i do because she says that it smells like christmas and so we're going to see what the actual scent is coming up in just a minute right here it is that day pepperberry mistletoe from aztec i have not shopped from aztec in a minute but yeah, she said it smells like Christmas. And that sounds fun for me because that's my favorite season ever. And then we're going to watch her do, again, effectively four different pours. So she has measured out and separated her oils. She'll be putting her lye solution into each of them. Then doing an ombre with at least two of the actual layers. And then, you know, all kinds of other stuff. This is a moment in the actual f whole footage. She did two different pours and one was this first one that I'm showing you now. And then I'm going to show you little snippets of the second one, but she did two batches of soap in one. And the second batch of soap she called gross. And you know, I mean, not to get on Kimberly's case too terribly much, but one of her things that she shares in common, I think with me uh, a lot. Well, I mean, I think we have a lot of things in common, but she seems to have a problem getting out of her own way sometimes and i don't know you know that whole self-confidence thing you know and i experience that quite a lot and so i second guess everything that i do all of the time and i'm convinced that something is going to be bad and then it turns out to be beautiful and awesome and so i really do relate to that a whole lot but also i wish my friend would stop doing that to herself but we are working with, again, like I said, multiple different layers of things with all manner of infusions because I did forget, and so I haven't told anybody that's watching the videos, that another part of this challenge was all natural colorants. And I was reminded of that with this footage. So thank you, Diamond Sky, for reminding me of that. That's why everybody's working with all the cool infusions with rhubarb and with spirulina and indigo and alkanet, all of the stuff. And she had actually said that she wanted to retry this particular pour and use a different rhubarb root to get a brighter red. And so she will be working on that later, you know, at some other time. But we get to see what this ends up doing, you know, after she finishes her soaps. Now here's the inclusion of the baby powder, so it looks, or the baby food rather. So it looks like it's going into the orange part. The butternut squash will be going into it. and. I really do love that there's baby food. I don't know if I've ever told anyone this, but we used to do this, the Soap and Clay Kidlets and I, uh, about, well, really it was every six months. So, cause it was always on a day where we would go to the dentist cause the dentist was right next to the mall. We would get baby food after the dentist and uh, walk around the mall and eat baby food for like our meal because they they wanted to eat baby food and it was just such a weird thing and I we stopped doing that because the last time we did it was like the day before COVID like shut down the school we were at a yep and so that was the last time so as soon as I saw the baby food in this I realized that I had not thought about baby food in a long time and also I was a little bit sad that we don't do it anymore because it's like associated with you know the before times but we might start doing that again i bet the kids would still want to weird stuff with my life there it is has nothing whatsoever to do with the poor but thanks for bringing back some memories for me kimberly because that's wild and i actually like the idea of using baby food for stuff that you can't get that's out that's like in season or out of season more accurately for your purees baby food is an option I like it. Now, with this, she is mixing up I, all three of her, three if not four, of her layers at the same time. You're seeing her put in her lye into the oils and getting them all to emulsion, making sure that everything is colored and ready to go before she pours her soap. 
And so that will be a testament to how good the swirls recipe is really that she's able to do all of that and have everything just sitting in their containers ready to go for the next step. But I was also very impressed because she was talking about it within her video, but also within this footage, I would see her like leave with something to go clean up a, a strainer or whatnot. But she was talking about it, about how small her working space is for making soap. And so essentially, yeah, she is standing over her dishwasher right now. And that's the amount of space that she has. She has an incredibly tiny kitchen with a whole family living in the thing and you know, whatever. And so she has to really figure out how to make it work in a tiny tight space. And I realized when she pointed it out, that that's something I've always kind of taken for granted and not really thought about with the sudzers, what kind of time or what kind of space things you have. Like one of the biggest problems I think with most soap makers that you're, you know, always running into like the biggest problem with making soap. I think everybody's going to say one of two things, if not two things as of equal import. And that's going to be time and space. And I didn't really think about that until she had sort of brought it up. It's impressive as hell. These soap makers that can do this in such a tiny, you know, area and still keep everything organized and, you know, not making mistakes and messes and all of the things. I mean, well done. Seriously. I don't know how you do it, but my hat goes off to all of you. It is definitely a hard thing. And, you know, I hope everybody gets to graduate to having your own room someday. You know, always hashtag goals. You know what I mean? Let's go pour these. Okay, and on to the pour of this, and we're going to be starting out with the green layer, and she is going to be taking a little bit of her white in between every pour, pouring on an angle, and putting some white into the green, and doing a gorgeous ombre, and I love ombres, so I'm here for that. And while we are watching her pour and do the things, we are going to talk about her as a business, because it's amazing that she got her site launched and also i just went to go check out her website so diamondskysopery.com and see you know, what she has up there because i've already ordered like i already did that thing but i wanted to you know show you guys and see if she had put some new stuff up since her launch because she just did that and i am an idiot because when she told me that she had launched and the website was live i immediately went over i looked at the website ordered a bunch of stuff and I saw that she had a shiny collection. And that is a K-pop band that Kimberly is obsessed with. Like she is the subject matter expert on all things shiny in the way that I am the subject matter expert on all things Taylor Swift. It's a whole part of my personality. This is a whole part of hers. And I saw that she had a shiny collection up there. And I clicked on it. And at that point, I don't know if it was just maybe my phone wasn't loading everything or they weren't up and live yet. I don't know. But at that point, there was just a hoodie. And I almost bought the hoodie because the hoodie was really cool. But also, I'm trying to, uh, you know, actually get rid of some of my hoodies before I put more stuff in this big, beautiful closet that Mr. Soap and Clay built me. Anyway, I didn't get the hoodie. But she asked me if I liked the shiny collection. And I'm like, yeah, no, I totally love the hoodie. It's great. And I just went on and the, she has a shiny soap collection. And this is what they look like. So, hey, Kimberly, I'm so sorry that I was like an idiot and was just talking about the hoodie when I should have been talking about these glorious soaps. But two, when I tell you that I clicked order so fast, I got the entire collection. It's absolutely stunning. Look at all those colors. They are so bright and fun and beautiful and just so much thought and effort went into doing a gorgeous homage in soap form for your favorite band. It's incredible. I love it, you know, and I relate so hard that. I love doing themes around the things that I love, you know? I mean, I did the Taylor Swift thing back when it wasn't cool to just talk about Taylor Swift all the time, you know? And I do all kinds of stuff. I've done the magicians. I've done, I love themes. So 10 out of 10, those are gorgeous. Everybody should go buy some shiny soaps so she can continue making them because I bet she loves making those more than anything else. Now we are on to the brown section of her yeah, ombre. And I think she's going to be doing essentially the same thing. Just adding a little bit of white and continuing on with her angled pour and continuing on with her ombre. But yeah, point is uh, the, the shiny soaps, 10 out of 10. Gorgeous. 
I love them. I'm so excited. I'm sorry I didn't buy them with my first order. But now I clicked so fast and didn't look at the rest of the site because I was so excited. And so now I'm wondering if I maybe uh, didn't manage to get this soap as well, because maybe that one has been put on too. I Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm interested in seeing what Christmas smells like, but this is, you know, cool too, because I'm actually more interested in seeing what shiny smells like and what, you, what scents you've decided to go with each of the band members and all the things. And I love that Kimberly actually exists in my life for a lot of reasons. Obviously, she's a great soap maker. She's a, a wonderful human, but she's become an incredible friend to me over, you know, the past several months and all of the things. And because of me knowing her, I got exposed to, you know, the world of K-pop in ways that I'd never really been exposed to it. And I thought that that was awesome because I really like broadening my horizons and expanding my musical, you know, tastes and all of the things. But also Scout's bestie in the whole entire world, big into K-pop and her favorite band is BTS, right? Like behind, but the, for sure by a factor of all of the factors, favorite, favorite band. And we were actually at the mall a few days ago getting birthday presents for said bestie in the whole entire world. And we were at that store that's like F-Y-E. I don't know what how you pronounce it. I think you actually just say it F-Y-E. You know what I mean? Like you, you use all the letters. Anyway, I was there because they've got a lot of K-pop and Kawaii and all kinds of cute stuff in there, right? And we were getting her stuff and there was BTS stuff all over the place. And I was telling Scout, I was like, you know, you should really get her into Shiny. I think Shiny would be cool. I think she'd really appreciate them, you know? And we were having that conversation and Scout asks, well, do they have anything for Shiny here? And I'm like, no, I've been looking. I don't see anything around. But one of the workers was listening in on the conversation and they're like, hold on. And they went to the back and they brought me this really cool shirt and this really cool hoodie and this like collector's edition, like, you know, album set or whatever. So we got to get her all those things. And I'm super excited to get another person on the shiny train. So thank you for that, Kimberly. You're, you're helping with the next generation getting into, you know, K-pop in a cool way and not just in a BTS or a Blackpink way. Which they're cool too. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not giving any hate to BTS or Blackpink. They're also awesome. But we are continuing on with this soap while we talk about <laughs> the now shared weird obsession that I have with uh, K-pop bands, me and Kimberly. It it's great. It all works out. It's actually just an extension of what we do, you know, together just generally. Now, with the end of this pour, she's going to take all of the rest of the soap that she has and get it on there and do beautiful swirls with each little piece. And I really like this because Twisted did it too. Pretty sure it's Twisted. Uh, I mean, maybe it's just been a number of you that I've seen this done in the, you know, end of your bars. You put a lot of time into decorating the tops and putting color in intentional places and swirling it around and then adding more color and doing the stuff. I love that. I really do appreciate that so hard, especially considering... I am just the person that scrapes out the end of all of my soaps, whatever's left in the containers onto the top, and it just swirled around. It's good to go, right? But not you guys. You're putting things in intentionally. Like, I, I really want some more brown here. I don't want the gray to show up, so we're going to put it in. And then it's gorgeous. It really is. But the secondary part with all of this is she made another batch of soap, and she decorated that top too. And the, the thing that she did for the decoration of her other soap top, while it was also gorgeous and stunning, this guy's going to go get set aside to, I don't know, see pop and gel. I'm going to hope that she does it because I love the colors. But she's going to, with the next batch of soap that she decided to make with all of this, she's going to decorate that top. And instead of, you know, just doing swirly swirls and being happy with it, she's going to be mean to herself a little bit and put words on the top of her soap. Now, I usually, like, I'll write a quote or something on the top of my soap just for funsies, just with the stir stick, like, not actually painting anything on there because I know it's there and that makes me happy. But she's going to spell out gross because she decided that she didn't like this pour. Remember I said earlier that she did two batches and one of them was gross. And so that's how she labeled this one. She'd be mean to herself. And so I'm going to show you how not gross it is in the cut because it's absolutely gorgeous. And let's go check 
and got cut out. Okay, and onto the cut of two batches of soap that we're going to show you the first of the gross that I put at the very beginning of the video and how pleased she was, you know, in her audio when she actually went to cut it and she saw that it in fact was not gross at all. It was beautiful. And then the cut for the actual submission loaf as well. And I know we haven't spent a lot of time talking about the soap itself with this, but that's not what Project Soapway really is always about obviously i do like to talk about the recipes and the things and that's gorgeous it's a beautiful swirl inside she had said in her footage that it looked like maybe a hidden feather a little bit like a hidden feather and i agree i really agree i think that she's right in that but now i am infinitely curious about something okay we'll we'll actually get to there later we are going to look at the you know cutting of her submission soap with all of this and Again, I thought it was an avocado. It turned out to not be an avocado at all, but it's cool. It's a very cool design if you wanted to do an avocado. Because I saw like an avocado pit in that. And then the green, it's like a camocado. I love that. But that's not what she was doing. And she was doing the baby food puree. Now, the only thing that I would be concerned about with baby food puree would be the added sugars. And that's not a thing to be concerned about except for when it comes to trace, you know. And so it might thicken up your soap batter. A little bit more but you can totally work through that and as you saw with her entire pour she had plenty of time to do this with all of her different uh well pours and angles and ombres and all the things and it looks absolutely stunning she end up with any overly thick ba soap batter anywhere and i think that that's awesome and it's a gorgeous bar of soap but i really am curious because i am doing this voiceover after I finished filming the face part and so what we're going to go back to is me and the face part and opening up her package and you see her soap cutter here it's a very lovely soap cutter it's a big beefy boy for sure but it looks like she's cutting these soaps into one inch chunks right that's what I, I feel like so now I'm very curious as to what her measurements are for her soap recipe. So I'm going to have to go back and actually look at her soap calc sheet that she printed out and like how big she pours, how tall she pours these things. Because the order that I got, there are like really chunky boys, some big soaps in there that I thought were cut to like two inches. But this is a one inch cutter. So now I have questions. But I don't have any questions about the soap and why Kimberly is awesome because she is awesome and I appreciate her so much and all of the things and thank you for doing the filming in such a tiny space managing to get all this done it's always impressive you are an impressive human i am always grateful and thankful to know you and that you are a part of the sudzer community and part of my life and all of the things everybody give her all the love let's go check out the unboxing and there it is a gorgeous soap that is not an avocado but it has a lot of cool stuff in it anyway and it looks like an avocado and it has baby food in it which I found to be kind of smart, kind of cool. You know, I like that. That's an easy ready-made puree. It's a fun thing. I've never actually tried baby food in soap, so I was interested for sure. I like that she was able to use the swirls recipe to ensure that all four of those different sections didn't get overly thick in order to do her pour. And her beautiful, had an ombre, lots of ombres going on. There's lots, there's a lot going on in that poor and in that video for sure. She launched her business last week, I think. It was last week or the week before and I was so excited. I told everybody in the Discord so that's awesome. Obviously everybody go to her website and you know give her likes and loves and all the things but I ordered stuff the day that she launched and I mean like the second she told me about it and so I have a box. I actually have two boxes. I don't know that I'm going to unpack both of the boxes because one is a personal box she said for me. Box order. So in that box was another box. I like that you're incorporating your colors into everything, including your packaging. Okay, so again, she launched last week and she launched with her Halloween collection, her spooky collection. And so the box itself, it's pretty cute. I love that. That's fun. The cats will actually love this guy. Hey, there you go. I have the packing slip and she wrote a little note on it and uh, thank you very much uh, Kimberly and uh, same 
to all three of those. Thank you. Well, I mean, two of them, because you weren't my first customer, but the other two, definitely. And so here's my order. All the stuff. And you guys, it's okay. Don't be afraid of that body butter that's in a glass container. I'm holding it up very weirdly. I'm not going to let it fall. And look at the body butter. It looks delicious. It seriously does look like frosting. And it smells like frosting. And that's awesome. It's definitely like hydrating, but not greasy. It feels really good. I got snap test. I can do snaps. This is a, a drop swirl that's called Bat Raspberry Boo Nilla. Okay, so this is black raspberry vanilla. We know it, we love it, it's awesome, but look at how gorgeous the actual soap is. It's black and so freaking shiny, so beautiful. Look at those swirls, it's absolutely stunning. That looks like a pumpkin or a heart or something up there. It's perfect for the spooky season and it's perfectly scented with the black raspberry vanilla. So creepy candy corn soap. Love that, right? About the glycerin rivers and kind of not liking them or whatnot, I think. But I think they're stunning. And I think it's really great that you put creepy candy corn as your product listing for that because the glycerin rivers actually do lend a kind of a spooky vibe there, you know? That's a chunky boy, too. That's a big bar of soap. And we have Ghost Train, which is a ghost swirl. Very, very cute. Not scented, but beautiful ghostly swirl in there. Absolutely stunning. Again, another big chunky boy. Absolutely gorgeous. And again, these are, this is a really good size soap. I am going to measure this and see how I can start cutting my bars to be like this, like I'm thinking a tall and skinny mold, but then cutting them in the thicker, because this feels good in my hand, like I could hold it really well to do, you know what I mean? Here's up, Kimberly, thank you for being here, for being part of the Sudzer community, for being part of the Project Soapway Challenges, for being my friend. I actually do appreciate that more than everything else, so thank you for that. Thank you for having such amazing products that you share with us. Thank you for this order and all of the good stuff and congratulations on your business. Second up, Sudzers, go support her business. Go support her. She is our resident K-pop, you know, aficionado and expert, subject matter expert. She is always trying new and interesting and awesome things within her soaping world. She is just an amazing human across the board. And you need to go show her all of that love, for sure. I definitely love her. So thank you again for existing. A uh, forklift just got delivered, and so my weekend is going to involve heavy machinery. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Uh, no more hospital visits for a while would be great. But I will see you guys in a couple days for a new week, a new round of soapy fun. Bye. And a forklift just got delivered. So my weekend is going to be spent using hard, big, uh, that's dirty.